Hey guys, in this video we're going to talk about this wonderful country in the South Caucasus region of Eurasia, Armenia, or as the locals call it, Hayastan. This is one of the most underrated countries in the world. It has so much to offer, ancient monasteries, great cuisine, and beautiful nature. And all of this for a fraction of the price you'd normally pay on a similar vacation in Europe. To the north and east, Armenia is bounded by Georgia and Azerbaijan, while its neighbors to the southeast and west are Iran and Turkey. It's a small country with a population of 3 million people, a former republic of the Soviet Union which became famous worldwide after its Velvet Revolution in 2018. Since that time, many people became curious to see what's happening in this country today. So let's take a look. Upon arrival at the international airport, Zvartnots, first thing that's going to surprise you is a huge bottle of wine in front of the airport. This means that the journey is going to be both interesting and delicious. Under the Soviet rule, the Armenian economy was transformed from agricultural to primarily industrial. Today, however, agriculture remains important. Armenia's economy still suffers from the breakdown of the former Soviet trading patterns. The conflict with Azerbaijan over Nagorno-Karabakh has not been resolved. Also, Armenia-Turkey relations are officially non-existent and have historically been hostile. The closure of Azerbaijani and Turkish borders has devastated the economy because Armenia depends on outside supplies of energy and most raw materials. Armenians take special pride in the production of cognac, brandy, wine and canned fruit. The largest wine and cognac makers are Ararat and Noah. Recently they started exporting brandy to the United States and Europe. To this day, the economy relies heavily on investment and support from Armenians living abroad. So what was the recent revolution all about? Nomination for the post of Prime Minister of Serge Sargosyan, who had already been in power for more than 10 years, was a tipping point and led to a series of protests from April to May 2018. As a result of the Velvet Revolution, Mr. Sargosyan had to resign and the opposition leader, Nicole Pershinian, became Prime Minister. Was it worth it? Yes. As a result, Armenia went up in the rankings of the Reporters Without Borders from the 80th to the 61st place. Armenia is now working hard to provide a favorable investment climate and to develop its IT industry. However, local residents say there's a little bit of disappointment after the revolution because the expectations were too high. Salaries continue to be at a low level. According to the official data, the average salary is just around $300 a month. But the local people say that it's even lower than that and it's around $150 a month. Armenia is a mountainous country with a great variety of scenery. The average altitude is 5,900 feet or 1,800 meters above sea level. Summer is long and hot. The average June and August temperature being 77 Fahrenheit or 25 Celsius. International tourism is growing. Most tourists come from Russia, Iran and the US. In 2018, 1.6 million people visited the country and the number has been increasing by roughly 10% since 2010. Hey guys! Hi. So you're from Hong Kong? Yes! That is unbelievable! <laughs> We are in Armenia and you yes. have tourists from Hong Kong. So what's your impression of Armenia? A very beautiful place. Yeah. A, a lot of people here is very nice. Okay. And friendly and always willing to help. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> we met a very funny and cheerful uh, travel guy here and she helped a lot. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Yes. Uh, yes. And what's your favorite location so far? Oh. Let me think. Like the monastery and the mountain, the two mountains, the Aurora Ar Mount, is that? Yeah, that's yeah. the one. Yes, the one, yeah. It's and beautiful. the cave. I went there yesterday. Yes. Okay, <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> yes. Thank you guys and enjoy your trip. Yes, yeah, you, you too. <laughs> Mount Ararat, which was historically part of Armenia, is the highest mountain in the region. Now located in Turkey, 
but clearly visible from Armenia, it is still regarded by the Armenians as the symbol of their land. Armenia is famous for its mountains and monasteries. The pagan Garni temple, built around the first century, is the only Greco-Roman colonnaded building in the post-Soviet states. Another monastery that's about 15 minute drive from the Garni temple, Gigard, is a medieval monastery being partially carved out of the adjacent mountain. Surrounded by cliffs, it is listed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. This monastery complex was founded in the 4th century by Gregory the Illuminator at the site of a sacred spring inside a cave. Now let's look at the cities. Upon arrival in Yerevan, the capital of Armenia, I had some mixed feelings. You step out of your hotel and you see people selling all kinds of stuff on the streets. You see dilapidated housing blocks from the Soviet era, garages in the inner yards of the apartment blocks, but as you move closer to the center, you see Republic Square and the Cascade Complex, they look very fresh and modern. Many central buildings are pink because they're made of local volcanic pink tough stone. Some of the best places to visit in the city are the fountains on the Republic Square, the first zip line in the city that goes under a bridge, the Armenian Genocide Memorial, the Victory Park with Soviet military equipment and the Mother Armenian Monument from which you can get a great view of the city. Some of the popular walking areas are the Northern Avenue, the Opera Theatre Square and the Swan Lake Park not far from it. When it comes to public transportation there is subway in Yerevan which was opened in the year 1981 and today it has 10 stations. Unfortunately they wouldn't let me go and film inside. Few people know that Yerevan has turned 2,800 years old in 2018. Erebuni is an ancient city and it's located within the modern-day Yerevan. It's an ancient city of the country Urartu. Hey guys, what's up? Well, guess what? I'm in Armenia, I'm in Yerevan, finally. And right now we're in, this place is called Yerebuni. And this is, this used to be a fortress a long time ago, long time ago. It dates back to the year 782 before Christ. So this makes Yerevan 29 years older than Rome. Gyumri is the second city in both industry and population and it's the Republic's major textile center. It was called Leninakon during the Soviet period. The surroundings of the city are rich in black tuff, a building material. So it doesn't come as a surprise that a lot of buildings in the center are built from this material. Unfortunately, in December 1988, there was an earthquake that caused severe damage and killed 25,000 people in the country. The city had to be rebuilt from scratch. Today, there is peace and tranquility in the center. And if it wasn't for the cars, you might think you were at the beginning of the 20th century. One of the main city attractions is the Black Fortress, sitting on top of a hill, not far from which is the Russian military base. Turkey is just 10 kilometers from here, so they're hiring the Russian troops to protect it from Turkey, but that's just a thought. Nearby is the monument, Mother Armenia. Around Gyumri, the scenery is beautiful. You'll find lakes, green fields, where you can enjoy magical sunsets. The third largest city in Armenia is Vanazor. In the Soviet times it was called Kirovakan. Tigran Avenue is the main avenue of Vanazor. That's where all the shops and restaurants are located. But walking and driving through the city, you will feel like little has changed since the days of Kirovakan. Another important city in Armenia is Vagarshapet. It's located just 20 kilometers from Yerevan and it's one of the most significant cultural and religious centers of the country. In 1945, Vagarshapet was renamed to Echmiadzin. The Echmiadzin Cathedral, Armenia's mother church, is considered the oldest cathedral in the world. The historical center of the Armenian Apostolic Church 
In 1992, the city was returned its former name, but today, in everyday life, they use both names. Many people call this complex the Second Vatican. The local specialty of the city restaurants is kufta. It's a chopped spicy ground beef cutlet cooked in broth. Armenia has the longest cableway in the world and it's listed in the Guinness Book of Records. It's called Wings of Tatiev. Unfortunately, that great footage I had from the trip to Tatiev Monastery was lost. But I strongly recommend you go and check it out. And along the way, make sure you stop at Navarank Monastery, which is located in an incredible natural surrounding among the canyons. There is no sea in Armenia, but there is a huge beautiful Sivan Lake, the largest freshwater lake of the Caucasus. It is located in a mountain bowl at an altitude of about 2 kilometers above sea level. Above the lake sits Sivanavank Monastery. Getting here from Yerevan is not difficult. It only takes about an hour by car. Roads are in decent condition around Yerevan, but as you move outside of the city, you will encounter some bumpy roads with a bunch of potholes. On the city streets, you will find a surprisingly large number of Mercedes. When it comes to natural gas vehicles, did you know that Armenia is number one in the world? 77% of their cars run on natural gas. Armenia is a post-Soviet country. And while the majority of the older population can speak fluent Russian, with the younger population, it's not always the case. Let's try to exchange a few words with these kids. Привет, пока. Привет, пока. Что еще по русски знаете? Я Артемия. Как? Лев. 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 Да. Тигр. Тигр, да. Ты что знаешь? Мишка. О! Плохие слова. Ладно, ребята, пока. 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 Armenians love to play chess and backgammon. And actually, they teach chess in local schools. Armenians are very patriotic about their motherland, no matter where they live. The Armenian diaspora, living all over the world, makes up about 6 million people. The events of 1915, known as the Armenian Genocide, when 1.5 million Armenians were murdered, forced millions of Armenians to move to other countries. Today, many Armenian philanthropists are trying to play a part in the country's life. They invest in the economy, they restore parks and cultural heritage sites. Not everyone knows the Armenian language. One phrase that will catch your attention is the French word merci, as a way of saying thank you is used everywhere. In Armenia, they love music. In Yerevan, you will find a lot of places that play jazz. Armenia is a country with a rich Asian history and beautiful landscapes, which every year attracts more and more tourists. I really enjoyed my stay in Armenia, and I highly recommend this country. Okay, let me know what you think about Armenia, and I'll see you in my next video. Это сироп.
гранатовый сироп. Без Просто сахара. без алкоголя. Без сахара. На, чуть-чуть попробуй. Это лючи. Это, это как сок получается. Салат, рыбы, это без сахара. Это как он очень густой.